time to review a more premium set of earphones today. This is the JBL Live Pro 2 and it's yet another all-round set of earphones available in the market today but it is a little bit different compared to its other siblings in the TWS lineup. Thank you to JBL India for making this review possible by sending me a demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump straight into how these are built. JBL has stuck to a simple yet elegant unboxing experience with these earphones. Upon opening it, you see the case in the lower compartment. The upper one holds the literature for them. Below it, you'll get the small and large ear tips along with a charging cable. And the box above it has the earphones snuggled in a soft foam packing. The case is a matte finish which is really the way every manufacturer should go since it holds up well over time without showing many scratches and scuffs. This one has a soft rubber feel so it ensures a good grip on it so the chance of it slipping out of your hand is unlikely. There are three notification lights on the front of the case which will let you know its battery levels and if it's to connect to a device when opened and the rear of the case has a USB-C charging port. The lid doesn't need much of a push to pop up, making it quite easy to access your earphones quicker and this has a very soft and premium sounding clasp when shut. It could be due to the little rubber lip within the lid that contributes towards how this sounds. It's small touches like this that make you appreciate devices like these much more. Upon opening the lid, the earphones are revealed to you, which very clearly state that these are more of a luxury set of earphones. The stems have a mirror-like finish to them, which also functions as touch areas further up. The rest of the body and housing have the same matte finish to it as the case. What's interesting is how it has a hidden light on the inside of the stem to let you know when it's searching for a connection. I can see some people who like to be discreet appreciating the light on the inside of the stem. The ear tips are a soft silicon material so this doesn't cause any wearing fatigue even over longer listening sessions. The ear tips and chamber are designed in an oval shape to ensure a better and more natural fit with your ear and it also will contribute towards how these sound. Something I quite like is how they've gone through the effort to protect the voice microphone at the lower end of the stem with a little metal meshing instead of having an open pinhole. If you plan on getting caught in the rain or going to the gym, these earphones will carry you without a problem since they have got an ingress protection level of IPX5. On a feature front, this has got Bluetooth version 5.2, in-ear detection, wireless charging, active noise cancelling, multi-device connectivity, and you can control the finer details on these earphones via the JBL headphones app. Within the app, you can see your earphones battery percentages as well as the case's battery life when both earphones are in the case. When you wear the earphones, you can toggle between the ambient sound controls on or off. You can activate the active noise cancelling which has a customization option. Within it, you can switch adaptive ANC on which will adjust its intensity depending on the surroundings you're in and when it's off, you can choose how intense you want this level to be and you have 7 levels to choose from. You can activate or disengage a leakage compensation which will modify the ANC basis how much sound Sound leak you might have with your ears. It's worthwhile ensuring you have the right ear tip size fitted onto your earphones before using them. Then you have a ear canal compensation which further personalizes your ANC experience with the help of a ear canal test. Once you do the test, the active noise cancellation will be at its best performance and quite bespoke. Then you have the ambient aware feature. It lets in noises around you so you can be aware of your surroundings and you can also adjust the intensity of this as well with a slider which also has 7 levels. Then you can use the talk through mode which will lower your media's volume and pronounce some mid-range ambient sounds near you so you can have a conversation with someone nearby. Then you get an equalizer in the app as well with which you can tweak your audio with a few presets and manually customize the EQ for the sound you prefer. I'll speak about this in the chapter about sound. You get gesture controls through the tap functions on the upper part of the earphones which are quite sensitive so you don't have to whack at them. You can control the earbuds to control ambient sound controls, volume controls, playback and voice assistant controls. The left earbud by default is programmed to control and toggle between ANC and ambient aware with a single tap. A double tap will toggle between having talk through mode on or off and a tap and hold will activate your native voice assistant. A double tap will answer and end phone calls and a tap and hold will reject incoming calls or mute and unmute your microphone during a call. The right earbud by default is programmed to control the playback and voice assistant controls. A single tap will play and pause your music. A double tap will skip to the next track. A triple tap will take you to the 
the previous track and a tap and hold will activate your native voice assistant. The call gestures remain the same on this bud as the left bud. To control the volume gestures, you'll have to select it for one of the buds, after which a single tap will increase the volume up by one increment and a double tap will reduce your volume by one increment. Then you get a voice aware feature that I've not seen any other brand do with their earphones. When you're on a call, you can let your voice feed back to you via the microphones, which some people find to be more natural sounding when speaking on a call. You can adjust the intensity of this as well. Below that, you get the smart audio and video options. When it's on for audio, it chooses to play a higher bitrate and when it's on for video mode, its latency periods improve for video consumption and gaming. Below that, you get an auto play and pause feature, which is nice to see since you can choose to switch it off as well. I like to keep it off when doing A-B testing with other earphones and not all earphones have this option. Then you get a sound balance option, which lets you balance out the audio on either channel. This will benefit someone who might have hearing loss in one ear. This will help them balance out the audio and level out a centered phantom channel. It's nice to see something like this being introduced into the user's hands. Then you can go to the voice assistant settings to choose between Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or have it use your native voice assistant. You have the option of switching off voice prompts and changing the language. You can do a earbud fit test, which will help you know which ear tip fits you the best. The Find My Buds feature has saved my knees many times with other JBL earphones, and it is a terrific feature to have with any wireless earphones. You can go into the power saving setting to set these to having an auto standby which will switch off after lying idle for 15 minutes. And you also have an auto power off mode which will allow you to choose from having these switch off after 30 minutes, 1 hour or 2 hours of inactivity. And within the support tab, you can reset your earphones if they need to be and have access to a manual if you need it. The multi-device pairing works well on these earphones because it connects to two devices at the same time. So if ever you're connected to a secondary device and your primary device is your phone and it starts ringing, it automatically latches onto that device so that you don't miss any phone calls. If you are consuming media on a primary device and you press play on the secondary, it will not automatically latch over onto that. You will need to pause your media on the primary device and then the audio will start feeding in from the second. So it will work like this vice versa. Switching over to the smart video mode, this will help reduce latency periods for whenever you're consuming video or even gaming. So uh, with it off, uh, these provide a latency period of about 120 milliseconds. Whereas when the smart video is on, it drops down to a very respectable 70 milliseconds of response time. So uh, instead of rambling on and just give you numbers, here's a quick demo to show you how this performs with the smart video off and on with gaming as well as video consumption. On a volume front, I've been listening to these between 45 and 50% volume because anything above that can get a little too loud for me. And sound stage on these is much like most other TWS earphones in the market today. It exists within a bubble in your head, giving you the illusion of some tones coming from further out of them. Imaging on these I feel has gotten crisper and cleaner compared to the other JBL earphones that I've reviewed in the past. Uh, it's much easier to zone in on certain nuances when it comes to this. When it comes to the active noise cancelling, these have an impressive 3 microphones per earbud giving you a total of 6 microphones. These are all collecting various data points so that it can dull down all the droning noises and give you a little more silence whenever you want it. So these do perform well with eliminating droning noises, especially from AC motors, fan motors, or even from vehicles that are passing nearby. You can leave the active noise cancelling on an automated mode, which does level out the ANC depending on how much noise there is around you. Now, if you do want to level it out manually, you do have that option as well. So one thing I did find uh, very impressive with these is the fact that you can control from a minimum to a maximum sweep which is I think about seven levels but what was impressive was the fact that at no point did it feel uh, like I, I started feeling nauseous and at no point did it feel or get to the point where I felt there was suction in my ears so a lot of people can be sensitive to act the active noise cancelling when it comes to these factors in particular but 
because you can control it and fine tune the level of ANC, I think this will benefit a lot of people. The same six microphones that handle the active noise cancelling also contribute towards handling the environmental noise cancelling. So if you do want to see how your voice would carry over to your recipient in a busy setting, there really is only one way to find out. I'm calling from the usual busy street. I do all of my call tests from just to give you a sense of how much of noise there is around me because these earphones are going to be battling uh, with a whole bunch of two-wheelers, four-wheelers, uh, some trucks uh, which might just blow their pressure on and there is some construction work going on over my left shoulder as well. So these earphones are going to be dealing with a lot of noise and uh, I do think that those three microphones per earbud are going to contribute towards uh, isolating my voice over the noise behind me pretty well but uh, instead of me giving you what I think about it, uh, here's where you sit in the reviewer seat and decide whether or not this is good enough for you. So I have been on my camera microphone all this time and I'll switch over to the Live Pro 2 microphone right about now. So this is what you can expect your voice to sound like when it's carried over to your recipient. This is the overall tonality that will carry over. Now, uh, it will do a significantly better job in a more controlled environment like an office or in your home. So uh, something that I usually do is I switch between different ANC modes just to see if there's an added strain on the voice when it's carried over to the recipient. So uh, I'll do that right now and you can uh, let me know whether or not you think there is a shift in the overall vocal tonality that's carried over to you. So I am in the ambient sound control with the noise cancelling on right now and it is in the adaptive mode. Uh, last I checked, it's not letting me go into the customize ANC option right now. Uh, I'll switch over to the ambient aware feature. So I, I, from where I'm standing, the ambient aware has kicked in right now. I can hear a lot of what's going on. I hope nobody blows their pressure on. This is a bit easier for me because it's not as uh, amplified into my ear. The active noise cancelling actually doesn't do very well despite being this close to traffic. And of course the talk through mode cannot be activated when you're on a phone call. So I'll go back onto the ANC mode. And this is much more easy on my ears right now because of the amount of noise here. And I'll scroll over to the uh, voice aware feature. So uh, a lot of people prefer hearing their voice played back to them through the earphone, which as far as I know, only JBL has this. Of all the earphones I've reviewed, I've only seen JBL include this feature. So it's off right now, and I'll switch it on now. So as soon as I switch it on, not only can I hear my voice, but it is letting in a lot of the mid frequencies that are carried over all the traffic and the honking. So I did hear that. It was quite unpleasant for me in this situation. I think in a more quiet environment, this makes sense. But of course, you can toggle between low, uh, mid and high. So right now, I can hear myself the clearest being played back. Uh, and right now, it's been reduced. So the, this frequency is also reduced uh, from the noise. So I'll, I'll switch this off uh, because when this is on, your active noise cancelling is bypassed. It is not switched on because I suppose there is an added load, load on the algorithm. So I'll switch it off. And I'm back onto the active noise cancelling mode. So this, of course, is a lot more pleasant to me, like I did mention. And so this has been your call demo. I hope this has given you a better understanding of these earphones. And of course, I will see you back at the studio. These come with 11mm dynamic drivers, support the SPC and AAC codecs and have a frequency response of 20Hz all the way up to 20,000Hz. On a volume front, I was listening to these anywhere between 45 and 50% because anything above that tends to get a little too loud for me. So if you intend on preserving your hearing in the long run, I wouldn't recommend listening to these beyond 55 or 60% because these can get a little loud there. At lower volumes, a lot of earphones tend to thin out but I was quite surprised to see that this maintained its roundedness and a certain level of energy even down low at 10 to 15 percent so this will be terrific to wind down at the end of the day with because it will maintain its rounded signature sound stage on this exists within a bubble in your head but it has more of a horizontal plane some tones can give you the illusion of coming from a little further out of the earphones but this happens very rarely there is good left and right separation and it has a good center phantom channel Imaging on these is more than crisp enough if you want to zone into certain nuances in your music. From anything from shimmers to uh, an upright bass in your music, it's easy to focus in on anything in the highs 
or even the lows if you want to enjoy your music that much more. High frequencies are carried over to you in a soft and smooth manner. This range does have a slight elevation in tuning but it stays miles away from being aggressive or piercing, ensuring longer listening times without any fatigue. This range isn't flat for certain but JBL has managed to tune this range with a sense of composure that gives it a feeling of being a mature or seasoned performer here. Despite not being as elevated as some other earphones can be, it maintains good detail in this range which is also thanks to how well these image. Listening to Steely Dan everything must go. These earphones are able to carry the cymbal crashes and highs of the saxophone with a calm and cool attitude, making this terrifically mixed track even more enjoyable to listen to. You could listen to this range until the batteries run dry and this range won't hurt your ear even at higher volumes, despite carrying over a good amount of detail in your music. Mid frequencies thankfully have a slight recess instead of an aggressive one, so vocals and instruments do not thin out. Vocals, whether male or female, have a roundedness that most TWS earphones lack because of a considerable recess in the lower mid-range. These remain healthy in this area, making your vocals sound more natural than making any vocalist sound like they have a cold. There is good instrument and vocal separation in this range and coming back to how these image, it's quite easy to focus in on certain nuances you'd like to enjoy in any music performances. Listening to Adele's When We Were Young, you're able to hear the huskiness in her voice which also contributes towards the fullness of her tonality. Despite the background vocals sitting further back in the distance, they have good presence, fullness and detail, making this beautiful acoustic track truly enjoyable to listen to. Having this much information in the audio without losing the lower mids helps connect to your music in a more emotional way than just listening to it on a surface level. Low frequencies are tuned in a very classy manner. It's well structured and tight instead of being big and obnoxious. These have good extension way down to the sub low registers without being bloated so the mid and higher range isn't eaten into, keeping your music even more balanced sounding than I expected it to be. This range does have good separation from the mids despite the mids not having its lower mids recessed. These don't have an exaggeration in this range which can cause listening fatigue over time. Instead, they have a more suave approach in delivering this range to you. Listening to Justin Timberlake and Chris Stapleton perform Say Something, this track has a sub-low frequency I didn't think these would handle. But boy can these push sub-low frequencies with a good amount of energy. These aren't lacking at all in the bass, which some people might think they do with certain tracks. But throw a good recording at it and it'll handle this range with a strong and upright posture. It's delivered in a confident and composed manner, making it quite gratifying to listen to. Straight out of the box, these do sound a lot more balanced than having any color. but if you do want to add a little more color or zinc to your music, you can go into the app to change or play around with the EQ settings. So once you switch the EQ on, you can choose between five different presets, which are Jazz. It emphasizes the bass and sub bass regions as well as the highs while reducing the lower mid range. It does add some zinc to your music if you don't like how these sound out of the box. Then you get vocal. There's a significant dip in the bass and higher frequencies with a significant elevation in the lower to upper mids, making this preset perfect for audiobooks or podcasts. Then you get bass, which elevates the bass and sub bass quite aggressively while maintaining a flatter response for the mid and higher frequencies. This tuning will appeal to the EDM listener. Here's where it develops a larger body in the bass and will get your blood pumping if you plan on taking this for workout sessions. Then you get club, which gives a slight boost to the lower and higher frequencies while maintaining a flat response with the mid-range. This adds a little more color to your sound compared to how it sounds out of the box and can be used to add a little extra body in the bass and richness in the highs. Then you get studio, which is tuned to be absolutely flat with a recess in the bass and sub-bass range. This works well for lighter music listening. Genres like jazz and blues bring on more of a natural presentation when this preset is active. Then you can make your own custom equalizer setting and you're not limited to a specific amount of bands. You can boost or reduce anything from 32 hertz to 16,000 hertz, giving you good control here, which is a nice welcome for custom tuning. So to sum up, on a build front, I think these are absolutely top notch because I have handled earphones with a matte finish before, but this isn't just a matte finish. There is a certain amount of grip to this surface. It does feel kind of rubbery, so uh, it's easy to hold. Uh, the case is a nice size. Uh, it's got a good amount of grip on it, so it's definitely not going to show scuffs and scratches anytime soon because of the material they've used for sure. The overall feel of it is quite premium. In fact, one thing I really do like that I've not seen on any other set of earphones is that little meshing on the mouthpiece uh, down at the stem to protect the uh, the vocal microphone, the voice microphone is 
it's beautifully made uh, the little cuts in it uh, so that it can be protected from dust i've never seen anything like this on any other earphones it's amazing to see the amount of quality that's gone into making these earphones on a feature front it's got absolutely everything you need uh, it's got even wireless charging uh, the anc works pretty well i've heard that some people don't like very aggressive anc so this can get uh, uh, aggressive in the sense it can dull down your environment uh, pretty well but it doesn't cause that sense of suction in the ear so i've at no point felt nauseated uh, with these uh so i think this would suit a lot of people and the fact that you can control your modes because i've seen a lot of earphones that only have off uh, low and high whereas this has seven different levels you can choose from the jbl app keeps evolving because every time there's a new set of jbl earphones i see that it's got a few more features added so there's a lot of things you can do via the app so it's worthwhile going into the app and fiddling because you can find you know not just uh, through anc or ambient aware and eq settings but uh for example the find my buds feature is genuinely something i've used in the past and it is it is genuinely helpful on a sound front i'm quite surprised that jbl has taken more of a balanced approach to the earphones i was expecting these to be a lot more bass heavy out of the box but i actually do like how these sound out of the box because uh, the high stay clear from being piercing they are not fatiguing at all it's quite enjoyable to listen in fact i found myself gravitating to towards a lot of uh, acoustic music a lot of jazz music to begin with because it it was just that much more enjoyable to listen to uh, compared to any EDM or any heavy music in general but having said that it's not that it lacks in bass it's just that it's better structured it's not bloated like some earphones can be and uh, that excessive bass can tend to eat into uh, your mid range and highs this doesn't do it the the bass is pretty well structured it is uh, tight it has got a good kick and of course if you do want even more energy in the bass and you want Uh, a bigger body of bass you can always jump into the eq setting and actually increase that so uh, it's not that it's not capable of doing it it is but i do prefer the way it sounds straight out of the box because it's tuned to be better detailed it's it's richer in what it does it's got uh, uh, a gentlemanly character because it is presenting itself to you uh, more like it's in a three piece suit I like that it's not trying to impress you. It's very comfortable in its own skin. It knows what it's doing. It does it well and uh, it's it's not trying to, you know, do the whole pomp and flair thing where it will accentuate certain frequencies a little too much. So, the imaging on these is pretty good. You it's very easy to focus in on uh, any nuances you want to enjoy. So, overall on a sound front, I I'd say it's 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 nice to listen to. It is genuinely enjoyable. And of course, on a music front, initially I did think it wouldn't be catered or pointed towards anyone who likes to listen to EDM, but it genuinely does very well with different genres of music. depending on if you have the eq off or if you toggle certain eqs on uh, it can work well for jazz and it can even work very well for edm which you can't say about many earphones but this is one of them so how much do these earphones cost well at the time of recording this video they have a selling price of 11999 rupees and you can avail a 25% festive discount on all credit card debit card and emi transactions at the point of the payment gateway on the jbl website and it's valid till the 20th of november and and another good bit of news is that if you do plan on buying these earphones in particular uh, if you do pick them up and register them on the JBL website you get a whole plus 1 year more worth of warranty so that's a total of 2 years worth of warranty once you register it on the JBL website so is this value for money well considering all the discounts that you can apply under this i'd say it's an absolute steal so uh, it 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 would be a terrific deal uh, especially if you want to pick it up yourself or even gift it to Uh, anybody you want to give a set of earphones to because uh, i i don't think you'll be able to see this at this kind of price uh, any time later uh, out of the festive season so all in all it is a terrific set of earphones to own and the fact that you can get it for such a good price again it it is an absolute steal so uh, there you have it that's everything you've needed to know about the JBL Live Pro 2 and uh, i hope this video has given you a better understanding of these earphones and i hope i helped you make some sort of purchase decision if you would like to help the channel i'm sure you know exactly how to but of course thank you for tuning in to Paul's POV for some sound advice